this hatred and me so love Where there is darkness, let me so light For in the beginning we shall receive And in the dying we're given Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us of all of our sins. It is my privilege, even as a fellow sinner, to share with you that our sins have been forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we say our Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. 
Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll remain standing for, for this, uh, this evening's verses. This week's readings come from the books of Genesis and Hebrews, from Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And from Hebrews chapter 12, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from selected verses from John chapter 19. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side. And Jesus between them, Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed, and his head he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. All right. Thanks for joining me, children. I, I appreciate it. I have a question for you, and I think we have kind of a musical bunch in here, so these questions are pretty easy. So, how many of you know how to play that instrument, this instrument right here? Can you raise your hands? Okay, a few. How many wish that they knew how to play an instrument like this? Okay, it's almost unanimous, almost, even marginally, even marginally, okay? How about this? Anyone know how to play one of those instruments? Okay. A few, a few of you, a few of you. Does anyone know what those instruments are called? For those? Kindling. <laughs> Kindling. No, no, no. <laughs> those are the woodwinds. Those are the woodwinds, right? Right? So how many of you know how to play one of these instruments? All right. So we have just about everyone that knows how to play, uh, play an instrument or knows some type of music. So I wanted to learn how to play one of those instruments when I was in fourth grade, and I got this, this very trumpet right here. And, uh, sorry, we lost that. Lost the mic here. Uh, got this very trumpet. Now, when I got it, I thought uh, I was going to play it well. So I did what any person would do, and I blew into it, right? And it, it just didn't work. So I thought, well, maybe I, wasn't, maybe I wasn't blowing hard enough. Nothing came out of it. It wasn't until I met my, my teacher, Mr. Scott Harder, and he said, you know what you need to do, Chad? You, you need to buzz your lips. And so he showed me how to buzz my lips. And, and that's 
And that sound finally came out, that sound that I had wanted for so long. But then he showed me other things, right? Because once you know how to make the noise out of a trumpet, there's other things you need to learn. You need to learn notes. You need to learn how to to read music. You need to know how to play with others, right? Well, the Bible is a great book. The Bible shows us that Jesus is our Savior, right? It shows us that he died for our sins. He, he gives us forgiveness. But then the Bible also tells us that he rose again and he gives us new life. But so many times we forget that Jesus is more than just our Savior, if we can believe that, that Jesus is also a teacher. Jesus showed us how to love others by the way that he showed love to those around him. He had compassion for them. He hurt with them, right? Many times he showed how to love others. He showed us how to love others by, by serving others. And so Jesus taught us. Now, now, how do we get better at something? Well, we, we practice, right? We practice more and more and more. And whenever we don't know what to do, we, we go back to the teacher. We go back to God's word and the Holy Spirit comes off those pages and shows us how to love others as Jesus loved us. Are we going to be perfect at it? Not at all. In fact, we're probably going to make lots of mistakes, but that's not the point. The point is that others get to see how we love them so that they get to see that we love them and our Savior above loves them as well. We are so blessed to have an opportunity to share God's love with those around us. So let's go ahead and thank Jesus that not only is he our Savior, but he is our teacher. And maybe on your way home tonight or in your homes right now after this service is over, you can just spend a few minutes talking about ways that you can show God's love to others, that you can go and learn from the teacher, which is in Scripture. Would you please uh, say a word of prayer with me? Dear Jesus, Jesus. thanks for loving me. me. Help me to remember remember. that you tell me me. and show me me. how to love others. others. Help me me. to be a part of that mission mission. each and every day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, at this point, we get to be blessed with a a message, again, from Pastor Greg Finke. Would you mind uh, go ahead and and opening with me in a word of prayer for for Pastor Greg? Heavenly Father, from from Psalm 19, may the words of, of Pastor Greg this evening that he shares with us today And the meditations of all the hearts assembled here and at home be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let's take a listen. Good morning, Luther Memorial. My name is Pastor Greg Finke, and I'm the executive director of Dwelling 114. We've had the distinct distinct privilege of being able to walk alongside you and your leaders and your pastor over the last couple of years as you have been becoming more intentional and consistent about joining Jesus on his mission in your everyday lives and discipling your family and friends to do the same. I've been uh, asked this day to uh, kind of jump on the bandwagon of this series that you are uh, doing on the gospel according to John. Uh, We're going to have a word of encouragement for you from it, hopefully a word of clarity as well, as well as giving you an opportunity to take a next step in your uh, lives as you are everyday missionaries in River Falls and beyond. Uh, Before we go further, let's take a moment for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we indeed do pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done right here in this message, right here where we are sitting, where we are uh, hearing this word, Lord. But beyond that, into our community, into our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, as it is in heaven, from you to us, through us, to the people around us that need you so badly. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Well, the title of today's message is, Why Did He Do It? Why did Jesus do it? And of course, what I'm referring to there is why Jesus did what he did in John 18 and 19. And by the way, if we're going to talk about John 18 and 19, we have to talk a little bit about John chapter 20. But uh, what's going on in John 18 and 19? Uh, Well, in John 18, that's where we see Jesus arrested and uh, put on trial. John 19 is where we see Jesus uh, crucified, uh, die, and then be buried And of course, in John chapter 20, we have the wonderful news of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Uh, But when we're talking about why did he do it, I'm speaking specifically about his uh, giving himself up, uh, allowing himself to be betrayed, allowing himself to be arrested, allowing himself to suffer, uh, to be uh, convicted, and, and then to be crucified unto death. Why did he do it? Uh, J- uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 gives us a, a wonderful insight. It says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So there you have it. The reason Jesus scorned the, the suffering and death and shame of the cross was because of the joy set before him. There was something so joyful that was on the other side of that suffering and death on the cross that it compelled him to give himself over to it. Now, when we ask the question, you know, what what gave Jesus such joy? Well, first of all, I can say without any kind of reservation that what gave Jesus joy is you. That's right. Jesus had you in mind when he gave himself up on the cross. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to take away your sins. Jesus died on the cross and rose again in order to forgive you your sins and make you right again with your Father in heaven. He died on the cross and rose again so that you can have new life both now and forever. But my friends, it is even bigger than that. The joy that that was before Jesus was not just you, although it was certainly you. The joy that was set before Jesus was that big goal of redeeming and restoring all things to his Father's kingdom. Remember how Revelation chapter 21 concludes. It's the one on the throne crying out in a loud voice, Behold, I have made everything new. That's the big goal. That's the, that's the, 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 the thing that gives Jesus the most joy. You and all creation being redeemed and restored. And now that we are indeed redeemed and restored, now that Jesus in chapter 18 has given himself over to to the uh, uh, death on the cross, chapter 19, he's he's crucified, died, buried. Uh, Chapter 20, don't forget the resurrection. But now that we have been redeemed and restored, what shall we now do? Uh, This is a, a fact that has been established for us. You and I are in We have been forgiven. We have been saved. We have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. We're set. So now that we are set, and some of us have been set for many decades now, what shall we now do? Do we, now that we are baptized and saved, do we simply sit on the bench and run out the clock till we die and go to heaven? Well, of course not. Uh, The reason we have been redeemed and restored is so that we can now take up in daily life, our true identity, ability, and purpose in Christ, and live that out for the good of others, so that not only are we loved, forgiven, and saved, but that our neighbors and our co-workers and extended family and people in our schools are also experiencing that love, forgiveness, and salvation, and joining in the great fun of taking up their true identity and and ability and purpose in Christ as well. This is what we mean by joining Jesus on his mission. So let's take just a moment to unpack what we mean by our true identity, ability, and purpose in Christ. You know, for us to uh, really understand what our identity, ability, and purpose is in Christ, we, we really don't have to go very far in God's word because in Genesis chapter 1, the very first page of the very first book of the Bible, uh, we are given the why, why God created us. 
You see what we have in Genesis chapter 1 is the invisible, intangible God who is spirit. Uh, he doesn't have a body. He doesn't have physicality in the way that you and I do. And this invisible, intangible God created the heavens and the earth. And after the Lord God created the heavens and the earth, as is uh, uh, described in Genesis chapter 1, on the sixth day, he then, uh, if you will, had a bit of a dilemma, didn't he? Here God, who doesn't have physicality, that is immaterial, invisible, uh, he had created something that is made, is created, is physical, is material. How does a God that doesn't have a body get his hands on a world that is physical, that is uh, made up of tangible things. Well, uh, God's decision was that he would make you and me. He would create humankind. It says uh, there in Genesis chapter 1, then the, Lord, then the Lord God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock and over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every uh, living creature that moves on the ground. And so what we hear in Genesis chapter 1 is God's own thought process of why he created mankind. Uh, we, if you will, are a hybrid of the created world. And then the Lord God took some of that ground and formed it into a human being. And in Genesis chapter 2, it said that he breathes into them, into Adam, the breath of life. And out of Adam, he creates Eve. And now we have humankind. And God gives humankind a, not only an identity as his children, literally in the world, but also as he gives them a purpose that they are to go into the world, multiply and be a way that his love and his service and his uh, his attention uh, is is made real and tangible and visible in the created world. Uh, it says things like rule over it and subdue it. And of course, in our 21st century fallen world, we have an upside down view of what power and and ruling looks like. But according to Jesus in Matthew chapter 20, we are not to think about ruling uh, in the same way that, that uh, the fallen world thinks about ruling. Rather, we are to think about ruling the way Jesus thinks about ruling. In, in Matthew chapter 20, right before Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the donkey on Palm Sunday, his disciples are arguing over who is greatest. And Jesus said, that's not how we operate, guys. Uh, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, we who want to be great in the kingdom become servants of all. And so there we go. The way we rule is the way that God rules, the way Jesus rules, and that is by giving ourselves for the good of others. And so there you go. We have our identity and our purpose stamped right from Genesis chapter 1. Now, of course, in Genesis chapter 3, we blow all that with the fall, with our, our embracing of sin over embracing of our relationship with the Father. And so God could have wiped us out, could have uh, tore everything up and started over. But God so loved the world. And that we can then fast forward to the New Testament, to the gospel according to John, for instance. And we can see that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God, the invisible one, became part of humanity in order to live the life that we couldn't live, die the death that we deserved to die uh, so that we would not be spared that death and then rise again. And so what we are witnessing in the lat latter chapters of John is God making good on that promise to go ahead and redeem and restore all things to what their, their, our identity and purpose was in the beginning and now has been saved so that we can take that up again and start to now live out that purpose for the good of our neighbors. And so when we unpack 
our identity, our ability, and our purpose in Christ, because we are baptized into Christ Jesus, because we have been saved from our sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we now have been redeemed and restored. Our, we have a, 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 a new identity, but really is our restored identity. And what is our true identity in Christ? Well, just like with Adam and Eve, our restored identity is that we are beloved children of the heavenly king, that we have been loved by God, and that because we are loved by God, that is who we are. We, can re we don't have to worry about our failings. We don't have to worry about our, our shortcomings. We are first and foremost beloved children of the heavenly king. Beyond that, we have been given an ability. What do we have to offer others? What is our ability to be able to go out and offer ourselves to others? Well, it's what we've already received from God because we are God's beloved children. Now we have the ability to love. As we have been loved, Jesus says, now we get to go love others from God to us, through us, to the people around us that need the love of God so much. It literally is our superpower. Now, we have, uh, ha have had fun over the last many years about uh, imaginary superheroes who have imaginary superpowers. I'm not talking about Superman. I'm not talking about Wonder Woman. I'm not talking about Spider-Man. I'm talking about a real superpower. You have the superpower of being able to change other people, not because you change them, but because of the love that God has given you as we love others, his love changes them. He changes them through his love given by us. And so when we are thinking about a superpower, we're thinking about love and giving love to others. Why is love a superpower? Because God is love because God is love. And so when we are helping other people and loving them, they are literally experiencing the person of God, from God to us, through us, but they're experiencing him in the material world. You see, that was our original purpose. We were to go out and be a way that his love, his service, his kindness, his stewarding were to be experienced in the material world. And so when we lost that in the fall, Jesus was sent to restore that. So now we can now go out and we can go out and fill the earth. And in this case, fill River Falls uh, and be a way by which his love is experienced. His goodness, his kindness, his service is experienced by people. And now with that experience, they begin to have the evidence that God does love them, that God does uh, come after them, that God is willing to give of himself for them. They're experiencing it through us, but it's him through us. So our true identity is that we are beloved children of the heavenly king. Our ability is that we have the love of God. And don't forget, God is love. And number three, we have a restored purpose. And that's exactly what we were just referring to. My purpose now, your purpose now, is to get up off our pews and to be able to go out and start looking for people who need a little bit of what we already have in abundance. We, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. And so since we have had this love lavished on us, we now have great abundance of it. If we believe that and trust that, we can live in the abundance of God's love each and every day. And then as we go out, knowing we have that, knowing we have that ability, knowing we have that to offer, now we have the great adventure, the great privilege of going out every day or maybe going on Zoom every day and being able to look for people who need a little bit of love, need a little bit of kindness, need a little bit of service. Need, need for someone to care. Dear friends, that's what it means to have a, re, a, a, a redeemed and restored identity, ability, and purpose. That's what Jesus was up to in, in John chapter 18, 19, and of course, chapter 20. The why he did it is because of the joy set before him. But now that we have 
been, been redeemed and restored by him, now we get to go out and make his joy complete as we have been loved going out and loving others and being able to help more and more of his lost people experience his love. Now, I'd like to wrap up our time together by helping you indeed take your next step in joining Jesus. I certainly will continue uh, working with the congregation as a whole, but I want to today issue uh, a way for you to take your personal next step in joining Jesus. And for that, I have two simple words for you, relationship and intentionality. If we're going to be joining Jesus on his mission in a deeper and deeper way, it will be because we start to get to know and start to invest in a relationship with at least one person who's living without the grace and truth of Jesus. So my question to you is, who is someone that you already know as you have been getting to know neighbors, as you've been paying attention to the people that you work with, that you go to school with? Who is one person that you already know and enjoy spending some time with who is living without the grace and truth of Jesus? You see, then if we can say, yes, I have this individual that I know that I actually already enjoy, uh, they seem to enjoy me, now I can start to intentionally uh, 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 build into that relationship. Not for the sake of, 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 of salesmanship, not for the sake of manipulating, not as some kind of bait and switch game. No, 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 no. We have a redeemed identity, ability, and purpose. We have received the love of God, and now we get to go out and be a way that his love is experienced in the material created world. And so if we really want to be involved with that going forward, if we want to take a definitive and fruitful next step, then what we want to do is identify one real person that's within our circle that is living without the grace and truth of Jesus, that over these next six months, we can start to really uh, offer ourselves to be with them, get to know with them, laugh with them, and, uh, and, and start to share the stories of who we are so that as that conversation deepens and the relationship begins to warm, you know, not only are you learning about who they are and what's important to them, they're learning who you are and what's important to you, that you are someone that believes you are loved by God, that you are someone that believes they have been uh, received the love of God for the purpose of then loving others and that they also, that they also, that because of the joy set before Jesus, they also were ones that he had on his mind when he went to that cross willingly, that Jesus already loves them, that Jesus already has died and risen for them, that he already forgives them and that as they simply receive that good news, they also can have an identity that, is a, that they are a beloved child of the heavenly king. That they also will have an abundance of this love because God loves them. And that they can also join in the great adventure of joining Jesus on his mission every day. Looking for people, getting up every morning, knowing their purpose, going out every day to look for people who need a little bit of his love, to receive and to give. My friends, we are so thankful for you and that God has placed you in River Falls. We pray that indeed you will remember that, that, that the reason Jesus died and rose was not so you could sit on the bench and run out the clock, but so that you could take up your true identity, your true ability and your true purpose each day and join Jesus on his mission. What's that person's name? And how will you make contact with them in the next few days to begin that process of, of loving them so that they become a part of that wonderful joy that, uh, that Jesus was talking about. God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Go with God. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Greg, for sharing that message with us. We continue our worship service uh, by professing our faith in the words of the uh, Apostles' Creed. Please rise. Together we profess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go to the Lord once again and and share with him uh, our prayers of the local church and the church universal. Heavenly Father, so often we try to emulate what the world does, and many times we become discouraged and self-absorbed. We forget why we were created, our purpose, and whose image we were created in. Father, in your love and mercy, send your spirit to draw us to your word so that we may see your love manifested in Christ, not only as recipients of this amazing love, but may we emulate this love to those around us, that this hurting world may see and receive the grace that we have been given. Father, in your grace, you gave us this body of believers. Thank you for each of them who through your guidance and word help us to stand strong in the faith. Be with us as we grow in your word and power, created in us an unquenchable desire for you and your word in our lives. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our government leaders that your authority is rightly administered. Give to the President, Congress, our Governor, and our government leaders your spirit of counsel and courage. May your love be made manifest in their lives and your name be glorified. Lord, once again, we ask you to stop this virus, COVID-19. We know you have the power and we trust in your goodness, but more importantly, use us to serve and glorify you. May our actions and response to others share an undeniable love for you and your children. Father, make your presence known amongst those serving our communities as doctors, nurses, and scientists, and teachers on the front line of this pandemic. Send your hedge of protection around them that they might uh, be encouraged by us, your children, that they might safely and compassionately serve those who come into their care. This morning, we humbly lay before you all those who are ill, in pain, and need comfort. We lay these people before you silently in our hearts. We also lay before you, Father, Gary, Melissa, Sam, Logan, Larry, John, Susan, Irvin, Mary. Father, surround these people with your servants, doctors, nurses, and family that they might know and experience your love through their trials and healing. Today, Heavenly Father, we give thanks and praise for a baby boy born to Jesse and Michelle Johnson on November 9th. We celebrate with them and their other children. We ask that you bless William Mark Johnson, that he may grow strong and glorify your name throughout his life. May the love of Christ in whose name we say and make this prayer enable us to live our lives as a reflection of his love. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for your many sins in the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until, with all your saints, we inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go with the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Just a couple announcements uh, for, uh, for you. Uh, Christmas boxes are due actually tomorrow. They are due tomorrow uh, on, on Sunday. Um, thank you for all of those. We have a, a, a great uh, number of boxes in the entryway. Um, when you come into church, you can just set them down um, on the bench uh, as you walk in to your left. Uh, Christmas program sign-up has been completed, so, so that uh, announcement is, is a void at this time. However, the, the, the next one we do want to pay special attention to. Uh, if you are joining us in worship, we just ask that you pay special attention uh, to the blue dots that are on the pews. Those are all two feet apart, and so we ask that there be at least three of those, so there's six feet between you and, and someone outside of your home. Uh, we also ask, we know that we've been doing this for quite a while, that sometimes uh, time in uh, creates uh, uh, an erosion of awareness of. I think that's how the saying goes. And so uh, the more time we, we are asked to, to sign up for, for worship, sometimes we forget to do that. But if you would be so kind in doing that for us, especially as we get closer to the holiday uh, season, we just want to make sure that there's plenty of room. As, as we all know, there's uh, starting to become a, a great spike in, in, uh, in, in cases here in, in Pierce and St. Croix County. So if you wouldn't mind uh, continuing to sign up for those worship services, uh, that would be a great blessing to us. Uh, thank you uh, for, for blessing us, for blessing me, for blessing Pastor Scott with some, some time off again. And uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Finke, for, for sharing with us um, God's message. Uh, may God bless your week as we glorify him and, and make beautiful music uh, to those around us with the love of Christ. Thank you.